Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. So I'm just curious as, why do Americans feel confident in the fact that Ukraine is the good side, that Russia is the bad side? And what I find highly suspicious is all these social justice warriors jumping on the bandwagon to cheer for war, to automatically condemn Putin, when they themselves can't name more than three politicians of Ukraine, probably can't say any words in Ukrainian, don't even know what Ukrainian food is. If you had to look it on a map, could they find it? Could they even tell you the history of the country? Can they tell you the history of the conflicts in those areas? And further, why do the people who grift for likes, falls, attention, why are you know they doing these I stand with Ukraine hashtags? When I bet you if you quiz them on basic principles of the political parties in Ukraine, the treaties they have, the exports and imports, the trade, the economics, they probably couldn't answer. So what this tells me is that people are being emotionally charged to cheer for war and cheer for another distraction. Okay, America should not care about what Russia does to Ukraine. The reason being is we have gangs in Chicago. People die more in Chicago every week than Putin has killed in Ukraine. And Americans will still support the musicians who produce the music that promote people to act in this way. America has 13 million single mothers. Single mother households produce more criminals. Most people in prison came from single mother households. Okay? The lack of the presence of a father. Okay? We have failing infrastructure. Look at a map of California. How many counties don't really have safe drinking water? We have a broken infrastructure. We have automation taking over our country where even in stores like CVS, there will be kiosks taking the jobs of regular cashiers. The border is open in America. Why are we going to defend the border of Ukraine when we have cartels on the border charging $11,000 per head to smuggle people across? Some people pay the money, they never make it to the other side. Kids' bones in the desert. 2,000 kids, look it up, if they still have the truthful articles, 2,000 kids went missing from the border. Where do you think those kids went? Human trafficking. Okay? Why is it? That's, uh, it's, that's not a crisis. That's not our priority. They fired border agents for not getting the stupid jab. Biden and Harris have done a failure in, in maintaining the wall, finishing the wall, and have invited people in, paying families who got separated at the border thousands of dollars in tax money while Americans suffer for jobs, okay? The cartels are literally smuggling in fentanyl and so many amounts of drugs, and we need more border agents. So they are running roughshod over our security. Farmers who live on that area, they're having their cattle killed, the coyotes, the human traffickers, they kill the cows of the farmers. When they set up camp to cook food, it causes a fire. The poor farmers have to deal with it. There's a huge problem, okay? Huge problem there. We can't defend our own borders. Border agents are defunded. But yet, we're going to care about Ukraine? I don't make sense to me. The same leftists who are cheering that Ukraine is arming their citizens fight for us to be disarmed here in America, who mock us for wanting to have the Second Amendment, and those same leftists argue for defunding police stations. And that means less safety for women, children, and the elderly. So why is it that these leftists promote the policies of communism here, but then hate when the Russian communists are going into Kiev and they're fighting different, you know, militias over there and whatnot. It's really strange and you have to take a step back. Are we being distracted into caring about some other nation's problem? And why is it that Hunter Biden got a position on a Ukrainian energy board making over $70,000 a month for something he didn't go to college for? Why does Nancy Pelosi's family members work there in the Ukrainian energy sector? 
What kind of corruption is going on here? And we know since 2016, the media is highly corrupt. They question Trump's mental capacity. Now they're questioning Putin's, but yet they hide Biden's clear mental decay. So you know that our media, MSNBC, ABC, CNN, all those, you know, dinosaur medias, they're not honest. And we know that the CEOs of all these tech companies are hyper censors, like they're very pro-censorship. Okay, so independent journalists who can go and get the facts of the situation get labeled as misinformation. And this allows the corporate warmongering agenda that got us into Libya, got us into Iraq, got us into so many conflicts that didn't benefit us at all. They're the same ones cheering you to go against Russia. We get oil, 7% of our oil from Russia. Biden cut our pipeline here. You know, Putin isn't perfect, but he's anti the woke leftist agenda of the rainbow mafia. He's caused some problems for Muslims, sure, but so has Biden when he was part of the Obama administration. Okay? And if you think about it, really ask yourself, why are they, why is every news network covering Ukraine? How many other problems exist in other countries that they don't cover? And don't you think it's even more weird how Americans have zero feelings about the starving children in Afghanistan because of Biden's deliberate sanctions? Don't you find that highly suspicious? Don't you find it a bit hypocritical where they're feeling more for Ukraine than for Afghanistan? Where America promised to rebuild the infrastructure. So America, we destroyed Afghanistan we promised to rebuild. We didn't deliver on that promise for over 20 years. And then when we left, we left it worse. And then Biden made it double worse by putting sanctions on the population. So Afghanistan is the glaring window to you can't trust anything these corrupt politicians in America say. We have the same, you know, the Bushes and the Clintons and the Cheneys. And we have those unfortunate uber corrupt dinosaur career politicians who've been in that position for so long and it's so hard for fresh people to get in and to stay loyal you know you got to think about what is their agenda here they're highly corrupt they live a luxurious lifestyle all these politicians is not going to send their kids okay maybe like biden had his son Bo, but he died because of cancer how many of these politicians who are banging the war drums with Russia, how many of them going to send their kids or enlist? What about all these blue check marks on Twitter? Are they going to enlist? Or these cozy laptop class university brats hanging out in their comfort of their home and their air conditioning, are they going to go enlist? It's usually conservatives and religious people who go and fight these wars. That's who it is. I would tell you, you conservatives, you're being led to go fight the commies of, of the 1960s Cold Era foreign policy. You have to think about really what's best for America. Who cares what happens to Ukraine? You cannot pretend to care about Ukraine when you don't volunteer. You don't give to charity. Have you helped anyone when they first come out of prison? Have you given them a job? Have you helped them find a job? Have you helped people stay married? Have you helped your local farmer? Have you been good to your own spouse? How often do you help your own children? What are you doing to make your community safer? This is what matters in the long run with Americans. It's not about what happens to Ukraine or what Russia is doing to Ukraine. If you really pretend to care, you're lying to yourself. You just want likes and follows. If you took a raw test on the situation, you wouldn't know. But the energy that the algorithms are producing are making people want to jump on the bandwagon. Jocko Willink sending threats to Putin on his YouTube channel about Ukrainians being the freedom fighters. How do you know, bro? How do you know? And who are you to send threats to Putin? in favor of the corrupt Ukrainian politicians who are in Biden's pockets. 
Jocko Willink is also a guy who is pro-intervention. Okay? Why are we trusting the same media and same talking heads who supported ending the lives of thousands of people in the Middle East? Why are we believing that? Why are we trusting them? We have gangs everywhere. Look at California. Look at the prison population. Look at how many people are overdosing on drugs and abortion. Look how we're losing the culture war. We got the Rainbow Mafia teaching horrific things to children and we can't even speak out. We have good people getting banned on social media. We have really smart people being silenced in universities. Good doctors being silenced. America is on the brink of a civil war. And everyone's talking about Ukraine now. Do you really care? Don't believe these people who say they care about Ukraine. I'm sorry. They just got into the energy. The same energy after 9-11, which we invaded a country that didn't attack us. Okay? These people just want to be popular and they just want to get that dopamine hit from jumping on the energy bandwagon. And this is why it's ridiculous for people to go perish fighting Russians because corrupt ice cream eating grandpa potato head Biden tells you to go do it. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't listen to them. You should not enlist. You should not go. Let Ukraine deal with their own problems. How can you go fight in another land to fight for their border while the cartels are running roughshod right here on the southern border? The same people who are letting leftists ruin our country and the same people who don't hold the right accountable for not pushing up against these economic policies and these social policies by the left. Now you're going to trust those two groups to push you to go perish because Russia did something? Ukraine, if they were smart, which if they're siding with America, I have to question their intelligence. Because our country is turning into Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm sure atheists don't understand this. The Silicon Valley, Babylonian, sick, inverted culture, that is the new America and that is what's spreading and that is what's being promoted through Silicon Valley. And that means that's what Ukraine wants to import into its country. Whereas Putin has been harder on those types of thoughts. He has been pro-masculinity, pro-family, more God-fearing. Sure, he's made mistakes in Syria, okay? But the point is, is that when you look at him, you see a leader who at least resembles strength. Biden tripped several times walking up Air Force One. He can't speak without a teleprompter. He can't answer questions raw. Reporters are silenced. He is coddled like a little man. His wife has to hold his hand so he doesn't trip and fall down. That's who you're going to trust to lead us into a war with Russia? And the UN is a corrupt organization. Hyper corrupt. Why are we going to trust them? We didn't vote for them. We the American people are already suffering. We just got done in Afghanistan and now Biden wants to drag us into another war? What's going on here? You want to send your kids to perish because of Ukraine? On behalf of Ukraine? When a gang member is more likely to end your life in America. It's very twisted. You, we cannot send all the masculine men, the righteous men, to go perish and then leave us behind with the feminine city boys who can't even change a car tire, who are wearing makeup and being totally bizarre. And then the psychotic, cold feminists of TikTok, that's who you're going to leave us with? That's, a, that's a, what you call a brain drain. They're draining. Biden hates our country so much that he wants to send what remaining good soldiers we have left out to go die. And the way he's destroyed the military by letting weaker people in and lowering the standards, this has caused problems. Russia isn't doing that. And China isn't doing that. And Russia is friends with China. And we are heavily dependent upon China. So you have to examine how this is going to affect us. 
And if they put sanctions on Russia, this will affect the stock market. This will affect companies. At a certain point, you have to say, it's up to Ukraine to submit, to choose to be part of Putin's, you know, power, and that's it. Sorry. I mean, why would Ukraine have an enemy so close to them and trust America who's so far away? You gotta really think, if they, are they that smart or is it just that there's this sort of blackmail going on between the elites? Throughout history, elites have gone to wars because of inter-family connections. So-and-so married so-and-so, they have a problem, they literally send people to die because those people in the offices can't get along. No. And now you have, uh, you know, so many people saying you know, all the most terrible warmongering things, yet these people are the same people who are saying people who don't have a certain medical procedure should be put into camps, shouldn't be allowed to work. The same people who are pro-segregation for medical status and if you're a conservative who want you isolated, put into a, a camp, who want you exiled from society, are now asking those same people whom they tried to exile to go over there and fight. There's more conservative religious people in the military. Don't you find it weird that the soft men are cheering on war and they're going to go send those men off to die while they get to relax here at home? living off the fruits of the military base empire. When people say like, oh, Ukraine will be given unlimited supplies, unlimited soldiers, why? Why is Ukraine so special to us above Russia? Ask questions. When was the last time the media told the truth? When we know that the media is hyper-corrupt, the editors are bought and paid for, real journalists are silenced, not put on mainstream television, why are we trusting them? Why? Aren't you tired of war yet? Look out your window, see how many businesses closed, how Biden ruined our country. He crushed our economy, and you're not even allowed to speak out about it? If Russia knew how weak America really was, he would have zero fear. Zero fear. America can't even get along between the right and the left. They're at each other's throats. But... The intelligent puppet masters have caused so much censorship that it's hard for other nations to see how weak America is within the soul of the Union. We're not the United States anymore. We are very divided, hyper-divided. And the left wing wants this balkanization. They say no borders, no walls, no USA at all. They actively destroy statues. They infect curriculums in schools. They put their flags everywhere, they riot, they loot. They want an open border where little kids are being sacrificed for their political philosophy. They think if you have strong border security, you're racist. These same people have ruined so many states. And the right has not stood up against it. And then Ukraine is going to go and trust those same politicians who ruined their own country. Why would you believe the word of a country that can't even fix its job market, where businesses are outsourcing jobs, where automation is taking over, single motherhood is high, full prison population, gang violence constantly, people overdosing on drugs, massive amount of people in debt, depression and anxiety everywhere. So many of the population is heavily medicated. And confused about what they are. Okay. Why would you put your eggs in that basket of that country? Over Russia. Who doesn't have those same problems. Sure they have problems. Every country has problems. But America is living off the Wild West classical Americana imagery. Instead of people seeing what it really is. Which is the San Francisco energy. The right wing. The really religious people who care about this country, who want it to be healthy, who want us to have less taxes and less government oppression, they're silenced. But the ones who want you to be less safe and they live in university echo chamber theories, 
Those are the ones cheering on the war machine. Those are the ones who work in the media and they're not going to be the ones to go fight. No. See, the farmers' kids in the conservative areas, they go to fight and the liberals on the coastal elites, they mock the rural farmer conservatives, the Trump supporters, all them. They mock them, but they'll go send you to fight their wars for them so they can relax and tweet. Why would you go hate another country because the talking TV told you to the same one that made us go into Iraq and Afghanistan and we got nothing to show for it where the military industrial complex made money where these politicians have stocks in those weapon companies okay and where those politicians party go to vacations with the people who run those news organizations why would you trust them? Why would you send your kid to go die in some Russian land because the TV told you to? You should be able to see that they don't tell the truth. You don't have all the facts. Don't start hating Russia because the TV told you to. That's not good. And if the Ukrainian people were smart, they would realize they have chosen a sick infected dog to be their guard dog. A dog with stomach cancer. A dog with arthritis. A dog that has teeth falling out of its mouth. I love my country, but it's not what it is. Because we have universities who have created cultural Marxism, inverted traditions, a country that is losing its religious hold on reality, a, c a country heavily infected with occultists, okay? And heavily infected with atheists who worship a sort of scientific tyranny and a futuristic robotic utopia, and they neglect and reject religious ethics and goals, whereas Russia does not have that yet. I'm telling you, man, just don't get on the war bandwagon with Russia. Especially if you don't know how to start a fire, you don't know how to shoot a gun, you don't do nothing in your own community to make the world a better place, you don't donate to the food bank, you don't do nothing, and for you to cheer war, while you do nothing in your own life or in the military is a disgrace. And if you don't even know any history about Ukraine and you just want to get on the bandwagon for social media likes, you're not a good person and may law expose you. Because people are having their lives change because of this. Sure, you can feel bad that people lost things in war. There'll be Russians who perish too, right? That's war. But our country, America is constantly having satellite nations serve it. We are the hegemonic force. How do you think we maintain that? By doing CIA operations to crush other countries, doing regime change wars, tearing down other countries' ability to become nationalistic in their oil supply. What we do as a nation, if we really understood it, we would see we are sometimes the baddies. We have to fix that. We have to get the corrupt people out of the Congress and Senate and out of the White House. That's what we have to work on. We have to get better police chiefs. We have to get rid of the gangs. Tell those soldiers instead of going to Ukraine, tell them to go into Chicago, Oakland, East LA, Detroit. Okay? That's where the soldiers should go. But they're leaving and then leaving us to fend for ourselves. No, man. You gotta wake up. What do you think?